Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we're going to do something a little different. We're not going to frame. We're not, we're not going to form and pour foundations. We're not even going to cut any lumber. Nope. In this video, we're going to install the AGS stainless steel Cascadia rail system. This was a super fun project. I have never done this before. This is like the world's easiest system to install. Now, not literally. I don't know. I haven't installed them all. But it's so easy that a framer can install it. There's a look at what it's going to look like finished. So let's go ahead and get into the installation. A couple things I want to mention as we dive in. Obviously, read the instructions. It's a fully engineered system. If you read the instructions, you're going to meet code. It's up to us though, to make sure that we have the structure underneath those posts so that they have a solid connection. Now, like I mentioned, they're stainless steel. So in this particular case, and never mind the dirt work that's going on for the septic system, <laughs> I'm making sure that I have equal spacing. So always double check yourself twice. <laughs> that's what we like to say. And then because I have four by material underneath, I'm lining it up with that edge of the decking. Now, literally, it's just four lag screw connections. So pre-drill it. What I found is that if I installed them, but not tight, it allowed me to move the post to plumb based on how, how like the order that I tightened the lag screws. So you'll notice I put one in, let's, let's call that the bottom right corner. Then I'm gonna go to the top left corner. Now, what's really cool about these posts is they're made with a slight curve in that base plate so that you can humor the post to plumb. That's right, I said humor, H-U-M-O-R, humor the post to plumb. Really, really simple with an impact driver. I just put the legs opposite each other and I'm gonna get it close to plumb or just kind of verify where we're at. Then I'm gonna install the others and then depending on which direction it needs to go in and out and side to side, then that's how I'm going to install the rest of the lag screws as well as tighten them down. Because the entire system is stainless steel and that includes the lag screws, they're going to hold that post to the framing below. And a lot of our strength comes from that connection. Make sure that you use the correct diameter drill bit when you pre-drill these. Stainless steel lag screws can break. So we want to make sure that we use the correct size drill bit. That way we don't break any of the lag screws. And there's the base plate. Nice, easy. You slide it down before you put the knuckles on. I'm going to double check for plumb, but that's the finished look at the bottom. The stainless steel tubing then attaches to the post via these knuckles. Notice the sharp point on that screw. As we tighten that, that's going to securely hold the tubing in place. This is such an easy system. Now that the posts are installed plumb and they have the base plate, <laughs> I uh, did not install the base plate the first time and had to pull these knuckles out. Okay, install the base plate first. Just put the screw through and then spin the knuckle. Spin it so that it's fully engaged, but back it out enough that as you run the tubing in, it's not going to scratch. You want the sharp point to allow us to be able to easily slide in the tubing. On this longer run, we needed to split the tubing at the center of the post closest to you, the viewer. So I'm running them from the outside. You can pre-cut these, you can cut them in place. I, I cut them in place. I highly recommend pre-cutting them. It is a lot easier. I'll show you that in just a moment. The Diablo stainless steel cutting blade does an outstanding job of cutting these to length. Part of the look of this system is that the rails don't connect at the corners. They end up with caps on them. That means that we want an even reveal. We want it to be pleasing to the eye. This is just the way I approached it, is I went bottom rails even off of the post. 
and then tighten them down. Just, just a simple connection with the socket. I do that at the bottom. I do the same thing at the top. I went ahead and did that on each of the two posts, the one to the left and then the one to the right. Besides an even distance from the end of the post to the end of the tube, I also want an even reveal. In fact, I think this is even more important, an even reveal from tube to tube. Because they don't connect, I want that to look nice and pretty. Now that the top and bottom tube are secure, then I just grabbed any straight edge. You could use a spirit level. I had a short chunk of two by that was nice and lightweight. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling each of these, just touching it while I'm still holding it in place. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them. That way it's a perfectly straight line on all the tubes that are there to my left. When it comes to the reveal tube to tube, I just do the same thing. I measure the top distance and tighten the top. Bottom distance, tighten the bottom. And then same thing, straight edge the rest of the way down. Really, really simple. Now, because this was such a small job, I just used our little Milwaukee cordless sliding compound miter saw. It's a seven and a quarter inch blade. I used the pack out there on the right as a stop. This way I could cut the uh, tubes to length. This stainless steel Diablo blade, as you can see, does an outstanding job of cutting the tube without burning it or leaving like little frays. It was perfect. It was such a good solution, nice and fast. I don't recommend bending over and doing this all on the garage floor. However, it's what we had. It was nice and quick. I decided to just cut two at a time. I felt like I could control that. I could hold them steady. It, it wasn't difficult for the blade. Like the blade just did an outstanding job. The only thing I did, and I don't know if this is important or not, is that when I plunge into the cut, I go nice and slow and I wait for the blade to stop before I lift the saw out of the cut. I don't know. I don't know if that's important, but that's the method that I used. As you can see, this is such an easy system to install that if you're somebody that doesn't have experience, you can totally install this system. I'm a framer. I don't do this kind of work, <laughs> but HES has made it so simple that I can do the work. And if I can do it, then anybody can do it. Literally the only tools I really needed are my tape measure. So it was nice not to have my bags on for the day. I had a tape measure at my speed square, obviously the chop saw with the stainless cutting blade just a little ratchet socket to fasten those knuckles, a level, what a drill with a drill bit and an impact driver. That was it. Like how easy is that? In fact, I was able to do this while they were installing the septic system. So I didn't even get distracted. AGS has just done an outstanding job of making this simple, strong, and beautiful. It really is a beautiful system. And there it is finished. What a beautiful railing. We went with eight quarter by four EPay top cap with multiple coats of oil. The painters just need to come back to stain the cedar down below to match and then it will be completely finished.
Thanks so much for following along. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Hopefully you can see how easy this system is. I'm not kidding. If I can do it, anybody can do it. All right, take care, everybody. We will see you in the next video.